Hi, I want to drive a poor person car. Can I borrow your car? What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Miami, Season 6, Episode 9, Mamacita Madness, Part 1. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So we open up with a scene from Dr. Nicole's Mother's Day Luncheon, and Alexia is popping off on her. She's like, you and Adriana are so pathetic. You guys are trying to conspire against us, blah, blah, blah. And Nicole's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. She's like us in this moment. We're like, what is going on? Then we get 72 hour rewind. We're gonna build up to that. And we open with Alexia taking Peter furniture shopping. And after kind of looking around and shit, Alexia shares that she has to be out of her apartment in the next 15 days. And she doesn't really go into detail about it. And the detail that she does give is kind of like, Suspicious. The owner decided to sell his apartment and he sold it really quick because I made it so beautiful. And now I need to move out. And this kind of feeds into the later scene in the sense that Adriana is bringing Anna Quincosas. I always want to say Quinones because that's a much more common last name, but it's Quincosas, which I've never heard before. But she's bringing Anna to the event and Anna was on back in season two, which aired like fucking eight years ago, damn near or whatnot. And so I watched seasons one, two, and three right before season four, like the return came back all those years later. And I did not like Anna. So, and the reason I didn't like Anna, it's like a really kind of small detail, I guess, but at the reunion, she was going at it with Leah Black, another, um, she was on every season actually. Anna was only on during season two. And she brought up Leah's, um, she was like, oh, and your son is socially awkward. Something about her son being socially awkward. And her son, RJ, was like 11 or 12 at the fucking time. And it's like, that is so like stupid. And then that made me kind of look at her and her family dynamic. And it's like, well, shit, your daughter, because her daughters at the time were like 17 and 19, if I'm not mistaken, maybe like 19, 21. I think it was like 17 and 19. I think those are like the ages. But at the time, her daughter made some kind of joke about her dad having sex with his girlfriend because Anna and her daughter's father, they're like not together. So, and it was just kind of like, that's kind of in poor taste, you know what I mean? I was just like, ugh. Like, it's one thing to kind of talk about sex and joke about sex in general, but it's something like really like crass. It was like, oh, finish on her back. Something like gross, it was like gross. That's, you know what I mean? So it was like, look at your own fucking family dynamic before you worry about Leah and her son. Cause yeah, some kids are socially awkward. Like. Some kind of grow out of it, some don't, that's perfectly fine. Like, we don't know what's up, you know what I mean? That's just so, like, rude of her. So I didn't like Anna because of that, and um, we also learned that she and her daughter, they go on this podcast talking shit about Marisol, and she looks like a rotten corpse. And it's like, I'll talk shit with my mom and my dad about, like, you know, like, people we know and whatnot, but I wouldn't, like, they would never go on, like, a podcast with me and talk shit like that about someone and Anna just totally owns it. Like, yeah, my daughter does call you the rotten corpse. Like all proud and shit. And it's like, that is like gross. Like, I don't know. I don't fuck with Anna. It's kind of saying that up front. But anyways, Adriana is bringing Anna to the event to stir up shit with Alexia. Because according to Adriana, she wants Anna to call out Alexia on her hypocrisy. Because in Palm Beach, Alexia was like, oh, like basically giving Lisa shit about like her financial situation and whatnot. And she's like, well, Anna says that you aren't doing too well yourself. So, you know. So it's kind of like, okay, but yeah, Dr. Nicole kind of got caught in the crossfire, it seems. I don't like Anna. Uh, I'm all for Adriana being messy, but like the bitch she's like recruiting to do it is just like too much, you get me? So next up, we have Julia taking Adriana to her little farm area, her little ranch thing. And she's got to share some updates and whatnot. She has hella fucking animals and shit, but she says that it started out as a little hobby, but it swiftly got super expensive. So she's like, well, let me try to like turn more of a profit. So she's selling two baby goats for $400 each. Um, she had to make some reser to not reservation, some reno renovations to like the, the barn, not the barn, but you, you know what I mean? The, the fucking structure and shit. So she's kind of going over that, talking about the way she's trying to like kind of turn at least a little bit of a profit. She says that she wants to do it all on her own. She doesn't want Martina's help. This is her endeavor, her project. So it's her duty. So she's on that. It probably feels really good to have your own thing. Like 
especially when like, you know, Martina is this like international athletic star. And you know, Julie is now a star in her own right, but you know, it's not until fairly recently. And I'm sure it feels good to kind of do it on her own. I don't know, I'm just kind of talking. In the car afterwards, Adriana says that Lisa was ganged up on in Palm Beach. And you know, she was just like preached at by everyone and just not right. And she adds that Alexia in particular is in no position to offer relationship advice. Cause remember back in fucking episode one, Adriana was already running with the whole narrative that, you know, Alexia and Todd aren't really doing too well. But I'll be honest, you know, there are certain things that I'm kind of side-eyeing about Alexia and Todd's relationship. So for one, he's not fucking helping her out with like, her endeavors and buying a new fucking property. But we'll get to that in a moment. It's just, there are certain aspects of a relationship that I'm kind of like, I don't think this is gonna last. And I, kinda, I don't know, something about it, but we'll get to that in a second. But first, Adriana says that a little bird, Anakin Gosses, told her that Alexia and Todd are having financial issues on top of whatever relationship bullshit Adriana is privy to. And Anna came out of the woodwork after watching last season, essentially. At the reunion, Dr. Nicole confirmed that both Leah and Anna both reached out to her. And Leah Black, you know, people have called, no one has called for Anna to be brought back to the show, may I add. But people have called for Leah to be, but Leah's a bit older. I think she's like older than like Marisol and Alexia even. You know what I mean? So she's like a bit out of the bracket. She had a little cameo scene last season with Lisa, which I thought was perfect. You know what I mean? A little update and whatnot. She looks great, by the way. I always liked Leah. I just like her kind of vibe, but she, you know, I don't know. I always liked her. But Adriana says that Anna messaged her after seeing how she was being bullied by Marisol and Alexia. And, you know, I will admit, you know, Adriana was on the shit end of the stick. Now, she did kind of put herself in the situation with a lot of that, that kind of shit, but, um, you know, she was kind of gang getting ganged up on last season and whatnot. That's what this cast does. They kind of do that and whatnot, but... Anyways, Adriana claims that, according to Anna, Todd's business is not doing well, and that is the reason why they're moving. And going back to kind of the suspicious, oh, the owner just wanted to sell it and he sold it super quickly because I'm just a great homemaker. It's kind of like, mm, you know what I mean? It's kind of suspicious and whatnot, but you know, who knows? And Julia, she's kind of uncomfortable as Adriana is telling her all this shit because remember, she's growing closer to Alexia, but you know, she and Adriana are like ride or dies. She's kind of like, well, so Julia and Alexia are kind of similar situations. We have Marisol and Adriana pulling their respective friends to them and kind of like demanding this loyalty, but they're kind of trying to explore other friendships, which is needed for a cast like this. You know what I mean? And like, that's what's not going on in Potomac. Yeah, we have Giselle and Candace not speaking to each other, refusing to do that shit. And it's like, you can't do that. Like, one of you guys has to go. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're not going to move past that, like what, are we gonna get to like the season finale and get like a sit down? Like what, what is like, it's just bullshit. Um, but yeah, they go to Lisa and Jody, they have a little date night and it's eerily similar to the date night that Lisa had with Lenny last season before he fucking split up with her and whatnot. Uh, it's like the same kind of setup, little table and two chairs by the pool and whatnot. And Jody's kind of taken aback at how all the ladies were like, questioning his finances and Palm Beach. He's like, they were all so nice to me when I saw them. But that's the thing, they weren't questioning his finances. They weren't like, is Jody making enough to support you? But they were kind of like probing about that. So I can see how he has that vibe. But before people gave their criticisms about Lisa, they were like, we love Jody, but he's great. We have no, no issue with him. It's just the timeline, the swiftness. It's you, you know what I mean? So yeah, he's kind of taking it back with that. And as they're chit-chatting, he shares that, you know, I'm going through a lot right now, you know, on top of, you know, what you're going through and all the media about you and Lenny and everything. I'm trying to start my, a new business for the first time in 12 years, yada, yada, yada. And he says, I would like you to check in with me more to see how I'm doing. And it's almost essentially confirming what Lays were telling her in Palm Beach, like, hey, you talk about like Lenny and your situation, we don't talk about Jody, we don't mess up with him. And now he's telling her, hey, I need you to check in with me more. I'm going through a lot too. And Lisa does acknowledge this. She does say that like, you know, she wanted to be a good communicator like Jody back when she was with Lenny, but he like refused that and basically like shot her down to the point where she like is like a robot, as she says, and just kind of doing 
didn't like that. So she does say that she does need to do better with, you know, being there for Jody. But later on, we see that she fucking like sets a reminder to check in with Jody. And she calls him like, hey, I want to check in with you. Blah, blah, blah. Like, is everything okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. It's just so awkward. It's like, Lisa, like, you have to practice that. Like, it's just so bad. But, you know, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe that kind of aspect's kind of atrophied. But it's like, girl, like, what are you doing? Like, Larsa kind of gives some shit as well. But we'll get to that in a second. We then see Dr. Nicole at home chatting with her mother. And she's kind of just recounting meeting up with her dad the other day. And she's like, it was just one thing after the other. Like, at first I was kind of like, oh, I was excited to meet your girlfriend. Like, that was the focus. Like, oh, bummer. Then it was, oh, I had, like, he wants to have, um, like, another kid at his big old age. Wants one or two more kids. Then she finds out that he already has two really young children she didn't even know about. So she's like, it was just so much, but, you know... It's never a dull moment with him and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Checking in with Gertie now, she's at a bowling alley with her family, and she has a moment where she chats with the kids about her diagnosis. She actually says the term breast cancer, so she's, you know, being real with them and shit. And, you know, she's kind of just supporting them. It's, it's a really emotional moment. Talks about her upcoming surgery and everything, and uh, just filling them in and whatnot, while also trying to have a fun little day, and, you know, so we see that, it's a really emotional moment. It's the first time we see the kids like on camera with her as she's like talking to them about it, I think. We then check in with Alexia. She's on the way to go see a realtor to check out some apartments, but first she's stopping by Todd's office for some lunch. And she finds out that they actually have 30 days rather than just 15 to get a new apartment. But it's still such a short amount of time. Like I've done quick moves, like find a new place to live super quickly and whatnot, like those, those quick kind of things, but it's like, you know, it's a lot of pressure and everything. Um, and yeah, Alexia says that she's super stressed out. And Todd is like super chill. And he says because he doesn't have to do anything. And it's kind of odd because she's like asking him to help out. And he's like, no, you've got it. You'll find a new place. You totally got it. So that's kind of situation where like Alexia does all the work, finds a place. And then Todd just like pays for it. But that's why he's not doing anything. And Alexia says, oh, Todd, he knows so much about real estate. Why isn't he fucking helping then? It's like, I don't know, it's kind of odd. Um, yeah, he's like refusing to help her out with the situation. It's like, it's kind of odd. So I don't know what their whole dynamic is. Again, I feel like Alexia and Todd are like not meant to last. There are too many little red flags and everything. It's just like, no bueno. We then continue this little rapid fire and see Lisa and Larissa link up for lunch. Lisa mentions how it's really hard to have lost some of Lenny's family members, like, in this, you know, situation. Because Lisa's talked about how she isn't super close with her family. And we really don't know much about Lisa's backstory. We know she's Canadian. Like, she's from Toronto, I believe. But that's pretty much it. We, and she moved to Vegas after she met Lenny. But we really don't know anything about her backstory. So I hope we kind of dive into that a little bit more. Especially next season. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of make Lisa start to share more about her and who she is like she made a reference the other day when she's taking l to ballet and she's talking about how like oh i used to do ballet blah, blah blah it's like why aren't we seeing a picture of lisa like in a tutu like during a performance or like at least her maybe a picture of her at that age where she was doing it like you know what i mean it's like she's hiding it or maybe maybe she fell out with her family and they're not like get she lost like access to those photos i don't even fucking know but it's kind of confusing. But anyway, we was talking about that. And Larsa can empathize because she says, you know, she was super close with Scotty's sister. And after she and Scotty split up, his sister stopped talking to her. And she's like, well, you know, it was really hurtful. I always thought that, you know, we would be cool and talk on like birthdays and holidays, but it just wasn't like that. So, you know, she also says it's frustrating because his family was so resentful and mean to her after the split, but her family was so nice to Scotty. She's like, what the fuck, you know? Hi, I want to drive a poor person car. Can I borrow your While car? While chatting, Lisa gets a reminder on her phone to check in on Jody. And it's so like weird. She's like, hi, you said I need to check in with you more, so I'm checking in with you. And it's like, why are you telling him that? It like cheapens it, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, you said I don't do anything for you, so I did this thing for you. It's like, what, what, that's like weird, you know what I mean? So. I don't fucking know. It's so awkward. And Lars is kind of giving her some shit about it. Like, you're not supposed to set a reminder. You're supposed to have them on your mind and on your heart. And that's why you're checking in with them. Like, what the fuck? So it's kind of weird. And yeah, that's the day of Nicole's Mother's Day luncheon. 
Lisa picks up Larissa in her housekeeper's car. It's like a little Honda. And Lisa's like, you know, everyone said I should drive a car like this, so I decided to test it out. And I'm like, did you fucking go to your housekeeper and ask to borrow her car, bitch? That's so weird. Hi, I want to drive a poor person car. Can I borrow your car? Like, what the fuck, Lisa? You know, that's just so weird. And once she gets in, Larissa's like, should we rob a bank? They'll never know it's us. Like, it's so such a weird little thing. I can only imagine if, like, someone, like, the paparazzi get spotted Lisa, like, driving that car, getting out of it or whatever, before, like, we knew the, the season, like, the premise. You know what I mean? Like, if fucking nine months ago we just seen this photo and been like, oh, Lisa. You know what I mean? <laughs> like... You're so lucky, girl. I don't know if I can saw you because I would fucking generate all this like speculation. But it's like it's just so like weird because it was like, uh, yeah, I'm too good for this car. I don't want to prove how like weird it is. It's like I don't know. It's kind of a weird move on Lisa's end. Gertie acknowledges like it's supposed to be a serve, like like a fucking haha, <laughs> like to get to get back at us because like this failed miserably. <laughs> like whatever. And Lisa tells Larsa that she's still upset with all the ladies with how they treated her at Palm Beach. She says she's gonna go in 75% angry, but 25% nice and whatever. So we'll see that. Kiki is the first one to actually arrive to the event. And they have like a little um, assigned seating and everything. And she sees a placard that says Anna. And Kiki's like, who's Anna? And Nicole's like, oh, Anna Kinkosis? And Kiki's like, Anna, Anna? And Nicole's like, yeah, Anna, Anna. And she's like, oh, Nicole. So even Kiki, who like came on as a friend of the same time Dr. Nicole was cast as a full timer, she knows what's up with Anna. Cause Dr. Nicole is like, I didn't know you guys had beef with Anna. Like that's like 10 years ago. But Anna was recently like in, in the fucking blog, the fucking podcast with her daughter talking shit about Marisol and Lisa for that matter. And it's just so weird. Cause at the reunion as well, Andy asked the ladies, does anyone here still talk to Anna? Why would he fucking ask that? Why would he ask about Anna in particular? Do you think Anna may have reached out to him? He's kind of testing to see. And when Nicole said, yeah, I talked to her, she reached out to me. He asked, when did she reach out? And she's like, oh, like recently. So, you know, it's kind of like kind of getting engaged if there's like a natural kind of like friendship anywhere there. I feel like Anna may have reached out to Andy, to be honest. Just my speculation with what I'm working with and whatnot. Uh, Anna's a fucking lawyer. She's a bitch and she's a lawyer. I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> But no, it's kind of weird that Andy would ask that. You know what I mean? Like, why Anna? Like, I don't know. Like, Joanna Krupa was a much bigger star. She's not in Miami anymore. She's in uh, LA now. But it's like, is there one still like a Joanna? Or I feel like that would have been a more, I don't know. I kind of see it. But it's like, why? It's kind of suspicious with knowing that she reached out to Adriana and Nicole. Why not have reached out to Andy? You know, who knows? Uh, but yeah, she kind of knows what's up. Dr. Nicole is like, oh, you know, I, I had no idea. Like, I didn't think to ask if there's any drama between the ladies. But Kiki's like, ooh, it's gonna cost some shit. And right afterwards, Alexia and Marisol roll in. And as soon as Alexia sees Anna's placard, it's fucking on. And Nicole says that Adriana invited Anna as her plus one. And Alexia's like, you're so pathetic. You know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And as Dr. Nicole pleads ignorant, Alexia's like, you're smarter than that. You know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Marisol says that Anna wants her to die. And she's like, oh, she said that I look like a rotting corpse. And we get footage of Anna's daughter saying, oh, yeah, we say she looks like a rotten corpse. Not just because she literally looks like one, but that's just like who she is. She's rotten from the core, like some shit like that. So Marisol saying that Anna wants her to die is a bit of a an overstatement, but it is some she would say some nasty shit about Marisol. I will admit that. And it's just so weird. It's like, why are you with your daughter on this podcast? It's so fucking weird. Alexia says, oh, you know, this was a bad move. It makes you look so bad, Nicole, blah, blah, blah. And again, Nicole's pleading ignorance. And Alexia says that Nicole's being sneaky and that, you know, she's trying to be slick and everything. And she wants Nicole to admit that, like, hey, yeah, I invited Anna to cause shit with Marisol. I'm still angry with Marisol, and that's why I let Anna come. But Nicole's like, I had no idea. Like, I, I didn't, it wasn't my idea for Anna to come. And we see a clip of Adriana FaceTiming Nicole like three days earlier and being like, hey, you know, Anna has two daughters. You mind if she comes to the party? And Nicole's like, yeah, I like Anna. And she does say that, you know, she and Anna have met up a few times, but it's like, 
but you had no idea that she didn't like Marisol. Like, you didn't get that vibe at all with how she talked about her. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just don't... I like Dr. Nicole, and I do believe that, you know, this is Adriana's doing, and she's getting caught in the crossfire. I don't think that she was as oblivious to it as she's saying. I'm just gonna say it like that. And Marisol says that Anna is demonic and horrible, and she adds that she called Marisol's husband gay. All this shit. And Julia's just right there like, <laughs> like, what the fuck, you know? She like arrived in the middle of the bullshit. And she says that, you know, the pieces are starting to come together. And she's like, oh, Adriana, you met. Like she's starting to see Adriana's messy role in all of this. And Alexia and Marisol storm the fuck out after grabbing the fucking customized denim jackets that Nicole got them all. Alexia grabs one, tells Nicole, thank you for the jacket, but I did not appreciate this and leaves. And it's like, oh my God, I know that's right, bitch. <laughs> like, Take the fucking swag with you. And yeah, for the episode ends in the preview, we see Marisol like demanding for Alexia to like fucking take her away from the premises. They basically go for a little drive to like the yacht club or whatever. We see if they come back later. They wind up going to the lunch with Anna. So props to Marisol for that. But yeah, she's not with it. I'm not sitting with her. Alexia, I want to leave. No. no. Let's just see what happens. No, Larsa, okay, cool. no. If they make her uh, leave, no, we no. come back. All right, fine. Okay, yeah, we come back. I'm not coming back. And a sneak peek of the next episode shows Adriana confirming, yeah, I invite Anna to call Alexia on her bullshit, you know, because she's giving Lisa, you know, all this talk about her relationship and, you know, her man's finances. What about your relationship and your man's finances? So she confirms that. Um, we also see that, I guess, later on this season, Julia and Adriana kind of get into it a little bit. I'm presuming in relation to this and when she's pulling on... Marisol and Alexia, but who knows? But yeah, that's where the episode ends and everything. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye.